Morning and welcome to the video. In this week's video, I'll be discussing big tin can holdings, which was a question from one of the viewers um, and is uh, certainly a stock worth exploring. Um, so this, I thought I'd just do the chart of uh, big tin cans since January the 1st as um, a name that certainly in the early days of the pandemic that sold off pretty heavily got into the 20 cent range which in hindsight seems pretty crazy um, as a name that has great exposure to the work from home theme but certainly in uh, as far as um, the theme of businesses becoming more digitized over time anyway um, you know this in hindsight seems pretty crazy but um coming out of that as um, you know as, as the the world uh, became a little, a little bit more normal, at least the new normal, and how businesses would start to, to spend um, and evolve. Uh, we saw it rally pretty hard here. Then, um, you know, in, in mid to late 2020, we saw it hit above dollar forty, almost a dollar fifty. And then, of course, we saw the announcement of successful vaccines in November here, which is uh, when the a bigger sell-off came, and only recently we've uh, started to recover here. Um, uh, and I thought when discussing its performance, um, it's worth it's worth looking at um, the recent numbers. This is actually the um, a few slides from its interim results back in February or March when they were announced. Now, the interesting things to see here, uh, obviously, recurring revenue over time. Um, as you know, and certainly that we're a business that uses a, um, a CRM platform. So we've got onto a few years ago and knowing how incredibly sticky these are because you know with our platform i'm not going to use a name um it's certainly a platform that we're very happy with but it doesn't do everything but certainly the the big issue for us if we decided we weren't happy with it is the huge cost uh, in changing platforms um it's simply something sorry it's simply something we wouldn't do unless we were incredibly unhappy and i think that's the reality of uh when you when you get onto a big platform like this the amount of time spent and money spent um getting familiar with it and becoming part of that overall ecosystem um it means that you're a very sticky uh uh, customer and what that then means is that the annualized recurring revenue number becomes very very important um, because it means it's very easy to predict future uh, future revenues which means obviously it's much easier to spend with confidence and to some degree which is why annualized rec recurring revenue is the most valuable sort of revenue valued by markets these days um, and why almost every tech business wants to become a rec recurring revenue sort of business um, and what you see here is you know well before you know, even 20, uh, sorry, the um, the pandemic, this is a business that was growing its ARR number very quickly. Um, back in June 16, it was only 7 million and now we're looking at 48 million. Um, and its market cap today is, you know, about um, 500 million. So overall, you're still looking at, uh, and you know, we're a little bit, this is a little bit outdated because I will show you here. Um, this has gotten a little bit higher since then. I cash operating payments of, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, $12.2 million uh, there, which suggests that it's a little over $50 million in annualized recurring revenue at the moment. Um, so, you know, at the moment, you're looking at about 10 times revenue multiple, which, um, you know, given how sticky the customer base is um, and given how quickly this is still growing, I certainly wouldn't suggest that seems expensive, pretty much in line with um, with its peers. But you do see some of the, you know, the real high quality recurring revenue businesses sometimes get revenue multiples, at least on the NASDAQ, um, you know, sometimes as high as 20 times, sometimes even more. Um, and these software businesses are as scalable as it gets. Once, you know, the initial work is done and people and businesses are signed onto the platform, um, the margins obviously just get better and better. And that's obviously what you can see here is that their margins over time um, are getting better, but, you know, gross margins of you know, 85% is just incredibly high. Um, you know, and this is the, the real key here. Um, you know, this platform, sorry, this market, this total addressable market that it's got exposure to is obviously growing quickly, continue uh, likely to continue to grow to $17 billion, uh, according to Big Tin Can by 2026, um, which is, you know, certainly a very strong um, uh, growth rate. And if they obviously have the ability to expand their market share, um, then their growth rate will even be better than that. And ultimately, that'll come down to the capabilities of the management team. It's not a product that I've been able to get my hands onto. And I think if I 
wanted to provide you, you know, in-depth analysis. I would like to see, um, or at least get a trial of, of the platform and, and see how good the product is. But certainly, if you look online, the reviews for Big Tim Can's platform is a very strong. <coughs> Customer retention looks very strong. Um, and so there's no reason to suggest that they would do anything other than continue their growth in line with the, with the uh, industry growth, but possibly even uh, more than that, considering the, what seemingly a high-quality product. Um, yeah, I should just uh, I did show that before, just showing how the recent performance has been. Um, and I will get into the last part to say, to some degree, as, as bullish as that all sounded, you know, I think the performance of Big Tin Can in the short term is probably going to be dictated a little bit more by macro themes such as um, inflation and interest rate outlook. You know, I have talked about it, at least in the middle of 2020, a lot how. The low interest rate environment is compl- is very good news for these high growth businesses that you know really are spending everything they're making on on growing the business as much as possible as they should in my view. Um, but it does mean and it, what it did mean is that the you know the value of its future cash flows um, were, were more valuable in that low interest rate environment. But what this chart's showing is that as those ten year government bond yields have grown. Um, you start to see weakness in in Big Tin Can and, and frankly, uh, all growth names as the you know, the value of their future cash flows have become um, lower. But um, obviously, we start to see these tail off. Um, there is a big difference between um, you know ten year government bond yields here and where we've historically seen them. So certainly, the um, the current picture still remains very bullish for for growth names. But it really depends on where this goes from here, it's because as exciting as their outlook could be, um, and you know they're growing still very fast. But you know they're not growing; they're not doubling every year. They're, it's a quick-growing company, but it's not doubling. Um, you know, I think a lot of its performance is going to be dictated by where this goes from here. So that would be my main concern. But overall, you know, it's a it's a really high quality company that's growing quickly and in you know in 10 years i wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being a great investment but uh, the next few years is going to be a much trickier prediction in my view anyway that's it for this week thanks for the question on big tin can i hope i answered that well for you if you like the video please click like and subscribe and i will be back to you next week 